Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 13 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series! Hooray! Today, I'd like to automate some farming. Um, so the last couple episodes, we've been doing pretty well. Um, there's one thing that I still really haven't solved, um, and that is power gen. I've been using lava and redstone as like an emergency power gen source, and that's just not going to work for me long term because it actually, as much power as you get from that, it's really not renewable. And the best way for me, in my opinion, to get power is renewable. So we want a goal of renewable power gen. So there's going to be several power gen options that we're going to go through throughout this series, but I really want to stick with this um, oil based power gen system that I've got going on right now, uh, which seems to be working pretty well, actually. To get that, I want to automate farming. Specifically, I'd like to automate the farming of the canola plants that we've got going on here. So my goal for today is to get automated farming going. Um, I've gone ahead and made some energy laser relays and I have a couple advanced coils here. I'd like to see if I can, by the end of the episode, fully automate oil production. So I'd like to automate the harvesting of the oil plants, the canola plants, get them linked up to the item laser system that we have here, and then also have the item laser system relay hooked up over here so that we can get um, canola oil going into the canola press. That's kind of the plan. Um, and I'd also like to work with storage drawers for the item storage for all of our um, farming resources. So that's kind of what I'm going to work towards today. That's the plan. To get that going is going to require several things. Um, I'm probably going to want... Now this is going to go through several iterations, I want you guys to know. Um, the first generation of this build will involve what we have right here, but eventually I'd like to build an official greenhouse where I have all the automated farming going on. And uh, that greenhouse is going to involve making greenhouse glass, which is some pretty nice glass from actually additions. It requires an empowered palest crystal block which is uh, empowered craziness shenanigans. It requires some prismarine shards and some cyan dye um, and some palest crystal, which I believe comes from lapis. So it's a little bit crazy to get, but once you get it, it's nice because like the worms, any plant placed under greenhouse glass will get growth increases. So if we can get a little bit of that, we'd be in good shape. So that's the long-term goal. The short-term goal is automate the farm as it sits right now. So I know I keep saying things like we're going to make this look better, but I really want to get as much automation and get the base up and running as cleanly as possible. And then we'll go towards making it look nice and uh, expanding out and doing more and more with it. Um, and like you, like you guys know, things change throughout the series. We're going to be switching it up. At some point, we'll probably go into like a refined storage system or applied energistics too. That's further down the line. So let's get started. What I want to do today first is make a farming station. Now there's a couple automated farming options that you can go with. Um, there is a farmer from Actually Additions and it works really well. Um, but what I want to use today is the farming station from Ender.io. In my opinion, it's like pretty much bar none. In order to make that though, we're going to need a slice and splice. Slice and splices um, are a nifty little device from Ender.io that is basically a crafting mechanic. So if we got ourselves a slice and splice, you'll see that in order to make this, we're going to need a zombie head and we're going to need some solarium. We saw last episode how to make solarium, so we're going to be making some more of that. And I think I've captured a few zombie heads throughout my playtime. I've got two. So I've got one to make the slice and splice and one to make the zoologic control. I literally have just barely enough. That's fine with me. So five of you, we're going to make sure that you're in alloys mode. Five of you, you'll get the solarium going. I think I need two more of those actually. So why don't we get the other two solarium that I know I'm gonna need in a moment. Uh, I don't have an extra machine chassis, but I do have some of you and I can get, let's see, gonna need some redstone, gonna need some iron, a piece of gold. I wanna get four of you, I'm gonna get a little bit more of you. I'm gonna get some more capacitors going here. So I got you. Cool. And then you can go away there. We'll get one of these bad boys. And then I just need shears and an iron axe. Which is cool. Good deal. My solarium might be done being cooked, at least five of them. 
Oh good, all seven are done. Slice and splice, ready to go. Nice. Slice and splice, up and running. You're gonna go right here. So you're gonna need power and you're ready to roll. Uh, the other thing the slice and splice needs is an ax and we're gonna make one of those right now. And shears. These do take durability damage as you craft things with the slice and splice, but I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys, I have never in my life used up an entire set of durability. You don't use the slice and splice all that much. Um, so for the farming station, we're going to need a Z-Logic controller in here, which is two solarium and two silicon, which I might have some silicon sitting around. I do. And luckily the slice and splice also supports shift click. So you'll notice as I'm shift clicking things in here, they just land in exactly the right spot. Um, and then the slice and splice, slices and splices. The other thing we're gonna need for this is pulsating crystal, which is unfortunately gonna require diamonds and ender pearls. Um, I just know how much I'm gonna need. It's two. Luckily I've got two from the last couple episodes that I've been playing. But now we're back to the age old, we don't have enough ender crystals. So we're gonna need more ender pearls at some point, which is a bummer. So cook that up for me, thank you. We're also gonna need a couple diamonds, which I'm actually in good shape with. Um, and then the farming station is just gonna require a diamond hoe and some electrical steel. So let's get some more of this. I don't think I've got, so I'm gonna need a couple more diamonds for the hoe. Do I have any electrical steel hanging out? I've got one. That was what again, coal dust? Yeah, coal dust, silicon, and iron. Not the biggest of deals. So I'm gonna need, do I have any sand hanging out? I do. Let's sag mill some sand. Thank you. Sag mill some sand to get me the silicon I'm gonna need. And then you, good enough for now. Let's get you sag milling this dude. If you wanna speed your stuff up, by the way, you can totally mix and match your double air capacitors. You can take it out of one inventory, put it in the other. Eh, we're not doing that much over here. Sag mill again. That'll get me my electrical steel cooking. Decent speed now, because I've got my double layer in there. And you got a little extra coal powder, nice. So you can go to here. These guys can make that. This can be sorted. The electrical steel is check. We're going to need a diamond hoe. And then the last piece we need for the farming station is another machine chassis. So let's get four more of these. Check and the Z-Logic controller, which is sitting over here. Nice. So we've got a farming station up and running. Hooray! Um, this is going to need tools uh, placed in it. And this one you will need to re replace the tools in and we'll see that in a minute. Um, let's go put this guy, I want to say his default radius is seven by seven. Um, what we're going to do here is plant him like this. I'm going to pick up all these. It should work with the worms and everything. So there's a couple ranges that we can have on this thing. And you know what I wouldn't mind doing? Let's do this. Um, I'm trying to remember what the ranges are on this thing. Let me get something and we'll be right back. All right, so I've got my farming station here. I wouldn't mind doing a little bit of lasery laser stuff to get some power over to it. So I've got my energy razor relay. Let's see, where's my closest one? It's all the way over there. Ugh. Finding that 15 block range is a little bit tricky, I think. What I really need on my house is ladders. Doing a lot of roof work. Maybe it would be smart to build a few ladders. Six probably enough? Make one more set just to be safe. Yeah, that should be cool. Um, I would like to have you and my tape measure here. So one of the things the tape measure can do, which is super cool by the way, is measure, I believe, in um, 
in straight line distance as opposed to just measuring in block distance. So let's see, undo, redo, bit, distance. So this is the one we want to connect to, right? So if I just did this, we could see where that 15 block range is, right? So like right around here is 15 blocks. So there's two options I could do. I could do like straight over to here, which is about 14 blocks. And then I could zip over to there and then over there. That might be a good way to go. So this laser connect to this laser and again we're probably gonna clean these up a little bit but for now because we're a little bit tight on resources we're doing it in the you know as cheap as possible kind of way um, now let's do this as a straight so not as bits but block distance right because I want to actually know how far away 15 blocks is from you so about here is where we'll get 15 blocks so if I'm on the same Y level as this which you can easily measure because you've got a pretty nice line actually that's one higher because I started at the block so about here is the same Y level right I should be able to link these if I fall again, I'm going to die. So let's be careful. Nice. And that could be some kind of, at some point I have to figure out what my pole structure is going to look like. There's neat looking poles from immersive engineering and that might not be a bad way to go. I will do something nice at some point. For now, getting things working is the priority. Hello. Well, that's interesting. You guys see that? Why, you know? Okay, that's okay. Neat. Okay. Wow. Um, what? Do what now? So that's some kind of weird desync issue. Let me double uh, troubleshoot that. That's a weird bug. So the farming station can do seven by seven, which is the current range of the farm seven by seven um we can upgrade it with a double layer capacitor which will make it 11 by 11 which would be two more total so one more on each side right so this block to this block is one two three four five six seven eight that's nine so if we want 11 by 11 yeah it's two more on each side yeah derp right so that should be 11 by 11 and then if we want it to be an octadic capacitor that's the top tier um, that is 15 by 15, so that would be here, right? And this would be 15 by 15, right? So with that in mind, we may eventually want to do stuff. Um, I don't have dollies in this pack, but I do have moving wands. So I can move the drawer system that I'm going to add here. Just planning ahead, don't mind me. And I want to figure out how I want to get energy down here. For some reason, I can't get the energy laser relay to sit. Now, another option, and this might be a bad thing to try, but we're going to try it. Can I put you down there and then put the farming station underneath? Or is this going to like totally crash and corrupt my world? Uh, back in a minute after I test this off camera. So funny story, went into a test world, not happening in a test world. <laughs> so I don't know why. <laughs> like I placed the laser on top of the farming station in a test world. Worked fine. It's like, no, nah, that's fine, dude. Go ahead. That's I, uh, yeah, no problem. Put it on. Put the laser on top. It's good. Don't worry about it. Uh, so now I'm really confused. Let's see if we can get power into this thing. Uh, I'm thinking that this is within range. Laser connected. That's funny, look at you not getting power. Well, you know what, we might we might not have the power to transmit, which is, you know, part of the problem, I'm sure. Possibly. Is there power in this thing? Nope, that's why. So let's put canola in here. You should be getting power now. Well, you guys should be getting power first after the canola processing. There we go. 
So I'm guessing you were a little bit low. Yeah, that's why. He's getting 76 RF attack, so I'm thinking maybe some power's flowing over here. We'll see. Oh, it's complaining about not having seeds. That's a good sign. Yep, it's getting power. Nice. All right, cool. So it was a little bit of a weird bug. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, so the next question is, what do we want to farm? That's a really good question, to which I don't have a great answer. Um, I know the main thing we're here to farm is going to be canola. But I would also, I think, like to farm trees. So let's do this. Can I pick you up? I guess I don't get the worm for doing that. All right, that's fine. Well, these guys can stay. I would like at least one section of this farm. So the Endorio farming station can be broken into four segments. Southwest, southeast, northwest, and now northeast. So this is east, and that's north. So this is the southeast corner. Okay, so the southeast corner is where I'm going to want saplings to be. So let's go get saplings, and then in theory it should plant them. And then I'm thinking canola in the other three sides, right? So let's make sure we've got enough canola seeds to cover that. Um, and I'm going to sleep through the night real quick before it gets crazy out. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That was really a weird bug. Especially, the, the weirdest part about that was I couldn't duplicate it in my test world. So I'm be curious if you guys run into that ever. So I said that was southeast, right? So that's the east direction and that's the south direction. So the southeast corner. And then we can lock this and it should, nice. Okay, cool, so that's how you plant. That's good, that'll work for me. Cool. So with lock, it means that it won't put another seed type in here, which works pretty well. Um, for canola, we're gonna do the other three corners, okay? And we'll lock all three of these. And then it should auto plant my canola for me. Beautiful. That's what I wanted to see. So are you gonna do something about that dirt or what? Oh, you know what? He can't do anything about the dirt because he doesn't have a hoe. So the next stage of this build will be involving getting a hoe and then automating hoes and axes for that matter. So we're going to want to do this and this. So an ax and a hoe to get started. So the farm can't really work too well. Let me get my watering can real quick just to demonstrate. If it doesn't have uh, an ax and a hoe in it. And they will take damage every time they do an operation. So for example, let's grow a tree. Dum -de -dum -dum -dum. There we go. No hoe, no axe. Totally annoyed at the fact that I didn't supply it enough resources to do what I would need it to do. If we give it the axe and the hoe, then it should have no problem both chopping down a tree and tilling the land to plant the canola plants. And every time, um, so this wooden hoe has a durability of 56 out of 59. If we, you know, grow some canola, which you can see happening not too badly, Grow, canola, grow. I want to make sure that we get this and not right click it to harvest. Come on, buddy. Grow that last growth tick. There you go. Um, so 56 out of 59. Look, the wooden axe almost completely destroyed. Um, and then when we harvest the canola, which should happen shortly ish. I would think. Oh, out of power. <laughs> There's a problem, Direwolf. Let's go give this guy a little boost of power with some redstone. Redstone will be a good supplement of power for what we need to do. This is why we're building this setup, so that we have more canola, so that we don't need to use redstone to power. So redstone go. You're cruising. And then we should be getting power over here now. Oh, look, it harvested. And it probably used up some durability. Yeah, 53 out of 59. So it totally used some of those durability. So there's a couple things we're going to want to do um, to make our lives better with this. 
And I really like this water source block to stay there, but I also like to build things underneath my farming station. So there's a couple things that we have to figure out how we want to do, because I need to pipe items in and out of this. There's two options. I can either pipe underneath, which is going to destroy the water source block. Now, the worms keep things well hydrated, right? You're doing a three by three here. I could throw another worm here. And you're doing three by three there. I could throw another worm here. That should keep all the farmland hydrated, even without a water source block there, right? I think this strip would not be hydrated. I can get more worms relatively easily. Um, you just, whenever you till the earth, it has a chance to give you a worm. So that's a thing. Um, yeah, I like that plan. So let's go underground and build a bit of an automation system for two things. One, we're going to want to pipe items, right, out of here. And two, we're also going to want... to auto craft a couple things. Specifically, I would like to automatically craft wood and a wooden axe. Cool. Uh, so wooden hoes and wooden axes. Where I'm gonna auto craft those is really a big question for me right now. So there's two options. I can either A, get a capacitor over here because we're gonna have to auto craft with a machine that requires RF power. So we're gonna either use another laser to hook up to that machine or we're gonna auto craft, or we're gonna have a capacitor over there that feeds both from the laser to the other machines using conduits. So let me think about that, we'll be right back. All right, so let's get the storage of the items that we need going first. For that, I think we're going to need about six of these dudes. Okay, because I want to make a drawer controller, which is going to require two redstone comparators and a storage drawer, um, which I think it's any storage drawer will do. So let's actually get a bunch of storage drawers. Six, sound good? Yeah, it sounds cool. Boom. And one of those can be turned into a drawer controller. Um, we might want more of these, in which case we'll handle it. So drawer controllers are super awesome and cool. And let me explain to you why. Um, so I'm going to put, for now, my storage drawer controller probably just right here. And any storage drawers you place on top, which, hey, okay, that's cool. What is that about? It's like there's some kind of block protection going on over here. Weird. Did you see that? I saw that. Where's an axe? I have a, one of these axes. That'll work. It's not an ideal one to use, but it'll work. Hello, redstone. What? Very weird. Hmm. So I should be able to put that there. Okay, that works. And then I can put my drawer controller here. Really doesn't matter what direction it's facing, I don't think, but kind of like all my drawers to face the same direction. Let's see what kind of trouble I get into if I try and place drawers on top of other drawers. That's working fine. Weird. Definitely something funky. I don't know what that's all about, but it's a little funky. So there's a few things we're gonna need over here, right? We're going to need a drawer to capture all the drops we're getting. Right now, we're getting wood, saplings, and apples from the trees. We're getting canola, and once we fill up these canola seed slots, we will also be getting, you guessed it, canola seeds. So, why do you think I made five drawers? Yeah, it was just luck. <laughs> but yes, you get the gist, right? So basically what we can do is item conduit these items over to here. And we're going to just configure this to be a very straightforward item conduit system. Okay, you're going to be, you had a wrench? 
Oh, well, you don't need the add a wrench. I think you can just shift right click on, there we go. Uh, this will be insert. And this can be extract always active. And what that should do is pipe the items out and place them in the appropriate drawers. And it should, so once drawers are set, then it should stick with them and we should be good. Another thing you can do, um, and I'm gonna go make it now, is make a key from storage drawers. It just requires one of those drawer upgrade templates, which I may still have one of. Yep, and a little bit of gold. The key is nice because you can lock your drawers. So right now, let's take apples for example. Uh, if you left click to remove all the apples, it's an empty drawer, okay? You can right click to put them back in and there's two apples in there. If I lock it and then I left click to remove, it'll lock it to being apples. So only apples will ever go in here, even if it's out of apples. Cool? So that's pretty neat. Uh, so I'm gonna lock all these drawers and I'm gonna sleep through the night and then I'm gonna get canola seeds and be ready for that thing. So let's sleep real quick and we'll lock this guy. So at this point, we've done a good amount of work. We haven't automated setting up the wood and the hose yet, right, for the ax and the hose, but we have automated the harvesting and the storage of the harvested items, which to me, pretty darn good. Um, so that looks nice. I like that. Cool. Uh, let's next look at automating that wood stuff. What do you say? So the best tool for this job is the crafter from RF tools. RF tools is a mod that we haven't taken too much of a look at yet, except for that builder that we made. Um, so we're going to get a crafter from this dude. We're going to need four crafting tables in total to make this. The tier one crafter is pretty fancy. You can program it to have two different crafting recipes. The tier two crafter is better because it can have four different recipes. And if you think about the recipes we need to make, in total, we need four, right? Because we need, in order to make what we need to make, we need four recipes, and this is why. We have oak wood. In order to make a wooden pickaxe, or a wooden ax for that matter, we're going to need to turn oak wood into wooden planks, so that's one recipe, wooden planks into wooden sticks, that's two recipes, and then we need to turn the sticks and the wood into a wooden ax, which is three recipes, and a wooden hoe, which is four recipes. So in total, we get four recipes, we can make all, we can make both those items, the ax and the hoe, from one set of wood, cool? So now we just need to figure out how we're gonna get power to where we want it to be. So I decided to do with my greenhouse, which is going to eventually be a greenhouse, the same thing that I'm doing with my other areas, which is have one capacitor, which will feed all the machines inside the greenhouse. May or may not need that going forward, but we'll see. Um, but for now, what we can do is probably just have the capacitor like in the ground here. And then we can break you, which, yay, that didn't crash my game. I was worried it might. Connect, yay. Laser. Array. Okay, that should fill up the capacitor, in theory. You getting power? Nope. Why, why you do this to me? Let me get as much canola as I can get. My base really is a hog, and hopefully, hopefully, once I get this up and running, we will start having serious amounts of canola. And once we have serious amounts of canola, I'll feel a little bit better about our power gen situation. It's the only thing I can hope for, guys. It's the only thing I can hope for. Maybe I'll throw another stack of redstone. I really, all right, I gotta stop burning through redstone the way I am. I just gotta, like it can't, it can't happen anymore. It needs to stop half a stack of redstone. That's what you can have. That's it. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm burning through redstone like there's no tomorrow. I thought that lava redstone generator thing was gonna be great. It's great, it's too great. It's the problem. All right, so if we had some conduits underground here with a shovel, and we are getting close-ish to the wrapping up point, but what we're gonna do is just run these conduits along the same line. 
straight up into here so that the capacitor will now feed into this dude. The other thing he can feed into is our crafter tier two, which I'm just gonna put here for now um, because I can. And this thing will start getting power. This doesn't use a whole lot of power and that's great. So how do we configure this thing? It's an awesome block, okay? It really just is. Let's get ourselves a few things. So first off, I'm gonna get a few pieces of wood, okay? And the way I wanna configure this is, so this guy, we're gonna insert on green as well, but he's gonna be an insert extract mode, okay? So this is extracting on green, okay? We wanna actually have him be in and out. Extract on green, but insert on brown. Brown for, you guessed it, wooden tools. This guy will insert on green and extract on brown, okay? So the way this is gonna be configured is, it's going to um, extract on green, it'll go here, in on green, with a higher priority, we'll make it like 10, and this will be priority zero. Okay, what this means is that this will have a higher priority for the items coming out of here than this does, okay? Now that's gonna be a problem in a minute because it doesn't know what items it's allowed to have. Um, well, that won't be too much of a problem. We'll see, it might get some canola, but we'll fix that manually in a moment. So now we wanna program it, right? There's four recipes on here. Double click to edit the recipe. The first recipe we're gonna teach it is how to turn oak wood into oak wood planks. Now we wanna use these oak wood planks. We don't wanna export them. The green inventories or the blue inventories here are what's gonna be used to be crafted. And the orange inventories down here, these four are what's available for the piping system to pull out the uh, finished products. So since this oak wood plank, we don't wanna extract, we wanna just use it for the next crafting. I'm gonna change this button here that says result of crafting operation will go to the output buffer. We're gonna make it the input buffer, okay? Apply, told you canola would land in here. It's fine, don't worry, we're gonna fix that, okay? Um, so now what would happen is if a piece of oak wood landed in here, boom, it's immediately turned into oak wood planks. And because it's on internal mode, it goes into these inventory slots, cool? I'm also gonna set this, well, let's do the next recipe. So we're gonna double click on this one, okay? And what we're gonna do is say, these guys make sticks. And again, internal, we don't wanna export the sticks. We want the sticks to stay internal to the machine, okay? Apply, nice, okay? Now I'm gonna turn um, on to activate, and we're gonna want these three inventory slots basically, right? The rest we don't need, so what I'm gonna do is hit the remember button, okay? What that's going to do is it's going to remember what items are allowed in here, which means that if canola starts to show up, it won't be allowed in here because only these items are allowed in here. Some sticks here, some oak wood planks go here, oak wood goes here, and the rest of the inventory slots get these guys, cool? The next recipe we wanna do is going to be, um, we're gonna do you, you, and you, okay? That's going to go external, apply. What that means, it's gonna make a wooden ax and it's gonna put it in one of the slots down here. And then the final recipe, it's gonna be you and apply, okay? And that's gonna go down here as well because it's external, nice. Now I do wanna teach it how to do this, so let's do this. Um, ignored, cool. So now if we put oak wood in there, see how it's crafting? Nice, right? Now I would like to get a couple oak in um, these dudes. So let's make just a quick table. Is it getting dark out? It's getting dark out. Um, I guess I'll run back to my base. We'll use this table later. But I wanna make a quick hoe. Okay, um, probably two of them. And sleep through the night. And this is becoming a long episode, but we're almost done, and then we'll wrap up. Cool? So use, those of you who have seen my series before know that this is a pretty standard setup for me, but those of you who have never seen this before and you know aren't familiar with the RF Tools block, hopefully it's helpful for you. So we're going to put the these guys here, and then we're going to hit that Remember button again. So let's make this so that it's on to activate, meaning it requires a redstone signal to do the crafting. And then we're going to say um, put our cobble in there and we'll hit remember. 
What this means is that it now knows that we craft two wooden axes and two wooden hoes every time we get some wood. Cool? So now if we set this to ignored, boom. It just crafted all that wood into wooden planks and sticks. Cool? Now, if we come over here and we shift right click you on extract, we're going to set to always active. Watch what happens. Okay? Automatically, it extracted the oaken axe, uh, the wooden axe and the wooden hose, right? And all the wood went into here. Nice. See how cool that is? So because of this, what we've got now is this guy's going to extract on green. It's going to come down here. The first green destination, the highest priority, is going to be here. Any wood that we get will try to go in here until we have a full stack of wood. Once we have a full stack of wood, it's going to go to the lower priority, which is over here on green. Priority zero. And any other items that don't fit in here, basically anything that's not oak wood, will also go over here to priority zero and land in the drawer controller and then automatically be placed into the appropriate drawers. Cool. Any time this guy has an empty spot for a wooden axe or hoe, what will happen is this guy, who's set to extract on brown, always active, can extract these four items on the brown channel, the only place that you can insert brown is here, and it'll go right into this inventory. And now we have a fully automated farm. All we need is more power. And that's something that we're going to work towards because we should be getting lots of canola now, right? How are we doing canola-wise? Got another 20 of them. Sweet. All right. So what I'm going to do is wrap up the episode here, and we'll come back next time. So Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Automated farm, pretty good. Uh, we need to pretty it up a little bit, you know. That's what happens. Um, and we'll get to that, I promise. I'm telling you guys, it is definitely on my to-do list to pretty things up. I would probably like to maybe move all my canola and seeds over to the farm. And at some point, I'll probably upgrade those drawers over there to have um, void on them or something like that, right? Oh, by the way, cool tip. Um, see, I have all this stuff in my inventory, like canola seeds and oak saplings. If you double right-click on the drawer controller, Anything that can fit in the drawers that's currently in your inventory goes straight in there. Pretty cool. All right, wrapping up point. Well past it. Double 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Going to work on getting some canola, maybe some more enderpearls between episodes, and we'll be back next time. For now, take it easy.